Scott Cooper's The Pale Blue Eye dropped on Netflix this month, and I was so excited to watch this. I've been waiting ever since the first trailer came out, and I thought it was going to come out in December, thought I was going to have a video on it in December, and no Pale Blue Eye in December because it was supposed to be on Netflix in January and in theaters in December, and I didn't really get that distinction, so oh well. I watched it when it dropped on Netflix, and here is my spoiler-free review. This is a fictional story based on a book written in 2003 about seasoned detective Augustus Landor, whose reputation is notable throughout America at the time, and he's enlisted to solve a string of murders that take place at West Point Academy in 1830. Over the course of his investigation, he enlists the help of a young cadet named Edgar Allan Poe. Poe's a bit of an outsider. He doesn't really mesh with the other people there at the school. As the whodunit murder plot unfolds itself, there are two other storylines that run parallel to this, that being the story of the detective Landor's daughter who has gone missing, and Edgar Allan Poe's romantic interest in the coroner's daughter. All of these stories run parallel to each other and never cross until the very end in a very, very good twist that you'll have to see for yourself. The twist at the end saves this movie from being mediocre. I really was like, you know, this was like some really good cinematography, some really good acting and directing, all that stuff. Um, what's, uh, what's the deal here? And then the twist happened and I was like, oh, I gotcha. Um, I will say, if you're familiar with Poe's work, this is a very Edgar Allan Poe-like story. I forgot that going in and watching it. I just, I forgot that it, what Edgar Allan Poe's stories were like. And when the twist hit, I was like, oh yeah, this feels like Edgar Allan Poe. Like I said, cinematography is phenomenal. Directing is phenomenal. Acting is stellar. This is a beautiful movie. I recommend you go watch it. It is on Netflix now. And if this is a movie that you want to go see, the rest of the video will, the rest of the video will be my unadulterated and spoiler-filled review of this movie and just my thoughts in general about it. So if you want to watch it, thank you so much for watching. And I hope you enjoy this movie. Let me know if you do. Okay, now that they're gone, How's it going? You guys are the cool kids. You guys, um, you guys have seen the movie and are ready for a conversation about it. So, this movie, I've, like I said, I've been anticipating it for a long time. I am a fake Poe fan. I, I, I have this book and I've read a few stories. I like Poe. I'm not well read in Poe. You don't need to be to enjoy this movie. Henry Melling as Edgar Allan Poe is a very compelling character. He's odd, and he's got this southern accent that I didn't think about Poe having. I just, I guess I just imagine everyone um, post-1900s having a British accent. But he's got this southern drawl to it, to his accent, and it's uh, it adds some quirkiness to the character that you don't expect from the first time he opens his mouth. Quirky is absolutely the best way I could possibly put Edgar Allan Poe's character in the movie. He's just an oddball. He's a poet. There's a kind of like a shining thing happening with his mother where he, his mother is with him. He feels that his mother is with him all the time and sometimes dictates things to him in his sleep that he can then write down when he's awake. So throughout this movie, we see flashbacks and hear vague stories from Landor about his daughter who has gone missing. His daughter's name is Matilda. He calls her Maddie. We see Landor being deeply saddened by the memories of her and at the beginning you know that she's missing and I believe that's it. But Landor's sadness seems too great and he doesn't seem to have any hope for her eventual return for someone to have just been missing. Um, but this isn't something I really picked up on until the twist happened and I was like oh yeah you know he was kind of overly sad about a missing person there was no hope in him he didn't look or anything that is because of the twist of this movie now I didn't discuss much of the plot when in detail so Landor is hired to solve this murder case um actually not it's not a murder they believe it to be a suicide and but someone stole the person's heart uh, after they were dead and that's what Landor is set to go investigate. 
But they find that the cadet did not hang himself. Rather, he was killed. He was hung by somebody. Then his heart was stolen after he was dead. So the investigation kind of continues, and Edgar Allan Poe, as a cadet, can interact with the people at the college. The reason Landor kind of hires Poe as a sort of a informant is because Poe already gives him information unsolicited, just unasked for. Poe goes and says, the person you're looking for is a poet, all this stuff. Upon investigating the first body, they find a scrap of paper uh, clenched in his hand, and he has Poe kind of decipher what it might say. Because... And they go through that, and it's a kind of an interesting amount of deduction. A lot of the detective work in this is very good. However, the detective story starts to take a back seat about 25, 30 minutes in to the side stories, uh, particularly the sort of politics between Poe and his peers at the school and this woman who he has now found fancy, attractive. He has a crush on her. Now it's important to note that the woman that Poe has a crush on is the daughter of the doctor at the academy who does the autopsies on the bodies that they find. And yes, I said bodies because another body is found hanging from a cliff in the woods somewhere. This is a really cinematically beautiful scene, even though it's dark and off-putting. But that's the point of the movie. It's dark and off-putting. It's a little gruesome, too, uh, with some of the cadavers and stuff. This is the second body we see, and I believe it's the last dead body you actually see. And the doctor determines that whoever cut the heart out of this one, the heart was cut out of this one, whoever cut the heart out of this body was a different person than whoever did it the first time because the heart was removed much more brutally, not as precisely as it had been done before. So now we start to expect some people working in tandem or possibly a copycat kill or something like that. And about halfway through, we learn that Poe himself has a motive to kill the two cadets who had been murdered. Uh, they were unnice to him, bullies to him. However, Poe says, if I were to kill every man that had been mean to me at my time at the academy, there would be approximately 12 people here. It's also very noted in the character of Poe that he's quite meek and frail kind of a guy. Not the kind of guy who's hanging people and cutting their chest open. We see this when the second body that is found, actually the guy who's dead, before he's dead, <laughs> attacks Poe on a road at night. Poe is unable to defend himself. Um, Landor has to come to his rescue. It's after this that that body is found, the investigation continues. But again, at this point in the movie, we're focusing more on Poe and his relationship with this girl who has some sort of disease where she just she suffers from seizures a lot and she has one around Poe and is just a very frail girl uh, this is some typical 1830s like Victorian era kind of stuff of like women just fainting and stuff like that accurate for the time uh, accurate for the time accurate for literature around the time something about Scott Cooper's movies um, if you've seen Hostels there's some degree of accuracy about the time period. Whether or not it is true accuracy or just perceived accuracy, it feels very historically accurate to what the time period would have been like. This one more so feels like a book from the time. It feels like you're reading a book from around this time when you're watching this movie. I really meant to do some research on this. Um, some of the swearing in this movie felt to me out of place at the time period. But I mean, swearing's been around forever, so it probably isn't. I just, I need to look up how frequently the F word would have been used in 1830s. Probably it would have been, but it's just, it just seemed different. It seemed more modern, like a more modern way of speaking in the movie. Otherwise, the movie is very historically accurate. In my opinion, I feel it is. Whether it is or not, that is beyond the point. Poe's crush, his lady friend, is ill, but a very good piano player. Very poetic, too. And I don't know how... It's kind of like Poe gets blinded by love because he's the first one that comes to Landor and says, the person you're looking for is a poet. And this girl is spitting poetry the whole time. And you're like, it's her. You know, it's gonna be her. And then they never do anything to subvert your... They, they never do anything to 
turn you away from that. Like, it's... The whole time, I'm thinking, this, this chick. It's, it's her. What we come to find out is that the doctor who's done the autopsies has a son and a daughter. We knew that. Um, and his wife. And But it turns out that his great-great-grandfather was a witch hunter. Or great-grandfather was a witch hunter. And was himself burned at the stake for being a witch later on. And so we find out that witchcraft is strong in his family. Where was I? Oh yeah, witchcraft. So we find out that the doctor and his family are pretty involved in witchcraft and that there's a piece of evidence that's connected here at the end. Um, Christian Bale's character goes up to the, goes kind of exploring the doctor's house. He's invited over for dinner. He goes up and he finds a, a officer's uniform missing a left sleeve um, bar. I don't know military stuff, but anyway, it's missing a bar on the left sleeve, which was a which was a piece of evidence gathered almost nearly an hour and a half earlier in the movie when a cadet who was set to be in charge of guarding the morgue area was relieved by an officer, but the officer was missing that. And uh, the cadet thought it was weird, but left. And that's how they think that someone got in to steal the heart from the body. That piece of evidence is connected here in the doctor's house. So at this point, it's like, oh, is it him? Is it the doctor himself? Is it somebody else in the house? So Christian Bale grabs that, goes down, and confronts the doctor and his family about it. And we find out that it was his son. His son was the one who had done that and stolen the heart. And we find that they need this for a ritual. I should really write scripts to plan out how I talk about this stuff. Earlier on in the movie, they go to this ice house and they find a circle on the ground and places where a candle was melted. So they that's how they deduce witchcrafts that play with this case. Because there's this circle with a triangle in it, which means witchcraft. There was a ceremony held in that circle. <laughs> And they believe that that's what the heart is needed for. Um, also, there's a couple of like mutilated cows that are found. And it's a really darkly beautiful shot uh, when they show the... It's a sheep, not a cow. But they talk about a cow. But there's a sheep that they show. And it was... Uh, it, it's pretty bloody, but it's a really beautiful shot somehow. I can't describe it. Watch the movie. But anyway, back to the end of the movie. So, Bale's character finds out who it is. There's kind of a... Someone comes in and interrupts him before he can actually find out. You kind of just put it together in your head. But they say another cadet has gone missing. And so everyone runs out. They're trying to find this guy. And they kind of run away. From the, the people who have hired him, the officers in charge of the, of the academy, are like, we have our man, right? You know who it is. And Christian Bale's pretty much just like, no, I don't have enough evidence yet. And they're, you know, frustrated with him or whatever. And uh, because it's been a long time and they just haven't found anything solid to convict anyone on. Um, maybe because they're doing too much time, like, flashing back to his daughter and stuff like that. But that comes into play in a minute. So this is when Christian Bale's character, Detective Landor, puts together the whole witchcraft connection with the ancient witch hunter guy to that family so he brings that evidence to the doctor guy confronts him learns the whole story then he's like where's edgar like where's poe at and poe has been in trance put in a trance um probably knocked unconscious actually but whatever it is by the girl he's had a crush on and her brother and they've taken him to the basement of this ice house where they found that ceremonial circle before and they are about to use the heart that they took from the one cadet and do some sort of disgusting ritual. They're going to kill Poe and it's going to heal her sickness. And because they found that it was working. Because they'd done it before. Um, so they're doing it again now. And uh, at the last minute, Christian Bale's character, Landor, runs down there, puts a stop to it. 
um, someone knocks over a flame or a candle or a lantern or something and some hay catches on fire and some words are exchanged and by the time final words are exchanged and a fight starts to break out um, the flames have like engulfed the building and um, a beam falls and cracks the girl on the head and like lays her out and her brother runs over there to try to help her and then you know um, Christian Bale's trying to drag Poe out of there and their mother's in there with him and he tries to grab her out grabs them both out of there and just in time to see the floor completely fall in on top of the daughter and brother of the doctor so the brother and sister died together in the fire of this building and up until this point there hasn't been any CGI in the movie so when you see the CGI fire it's like that's not real it looks really good but it still looks like CGI where you're like ah but it's because the whole movie has been done without CGI which I love it's all none of its blue screens it's all just beautiful but after this you're like okay the movie's over what the heck was all that stuff about Landor's daughter um, this entire movie seems like it was a waste of time because they didn't really do any investigating into those obvious leads with those guys. It was just like, what was this? Um, and then the I like checked the timestamp on it. There's still 30 minutes left of this movie. I'm like, hmm. Maybe it's just got a really long credit sequence. Maybe it's like, maybe you only got like 10 minutes left and they're just going to wrap it up or something. But there's a final twist. It's not over yet. We follow Landor back to his little cabin, and he's sitting down, um, mourning over his daughter who's lost, and then um, Poe shows up again, and that scrap of paper that he had been given to decipher was left with him, and he also received a note from Landor, and for whatever reason, Poe decided to compare these two, and noticed a shocking similarity. To the point where he deduced that they are written by the same guy. They were both written by Landor. So what does this mean? This means that Landor is the one who killed the first guy. Landor is the one who's been doing the, the, the killing stuff. And it, it's like, well, I thought it was these people. And then Landor tells his story. His daughter, who we've been seeing flashbacks of and hearing about the whole movie, was on her way back from the cadet ball when three cadets or students at the school um guys not at the time um attack her under a covered bridge and um have their way with her and um the next morning um Christian Bale's character goes out and looking for her and finds her in the woods. She's crying. She's bloody. She's distraught. Um, and we we learn that uh, she can't live with this pain that has happened, the thing that has happened to her. And she jumps off of a cliff in front of her father. Her last words to him being, I love you. So after this, filled with um, rage and... Um, just a sense of revenge and vengeance. Landor n finds out who were the three boys who did it um, and tortures and kills one of them. And that is the first body that is found in the film. He doesn't torture him, but he hangs him. And it's torturous. He hangs him. Um, but not high up off the ground, like pretty low off the ground. He was torturing him, trying to figure out who else had done it. And um, he did figure that out. And so the body's found, but he's not the one who took the hearts. There was something said earlier on where the, they swore the bodies were already dead, and they just wanted the hearts from them. And you're like, yeah, whatever, you don't believe that. But now you do, because now you know Landor, the guy who's been solving the murder mystery, is the one who killed the first cadet. So now you know that other family was tied in because they were using the bodies for the satanic ritual. They weren't working in cahoots with Landor. I thought there was that for a second, but then that can't be because there's a lot of plot holes if that's the case. So that's not it. They just, it's just a coincidence. They knew that that Bob person was dead, so they use his heart. Then, but Landor's not done on his revenge trip. He's got two more people to kill. So the second body they find 
And this is where Landor's deception gets there, because Landor is helping them find, and he's, oh wow, there's a body, and when he sees it hiding from it, so he's he knew where that was, because he did, he killed the guy. This is, there's a lot of clips from the trailer of this particular scene, where they find the body hanging off the cliff, but they said that the heart was cut out rather differently than it had been the first time. Well, in order to keep consistent with the profile of the killer, Landor now had to do something he didn't want to do, but he had to cut the heart out of the cadet in order to make the killings look connected. So that's why it's done more brutally. Um, Landor's not as gentle of a person as the daughter or the son would have been to cut the heart out of the first guy, and he didn't have as much time. He didn't have the operating table, things like that. He just had killed him out in the wild and hung him there. That body was also castrated. Oh! Yeah, um, because of what they did to his daughter, <laughs> he uh, castrated the second body, uh, which is something he didn't get a chance to do on the first one. So, yeah. And there was a third person who had done this, but he is the th final cadet that they found that they found to be missing, and uh, he knew he was next because he had recognized the pattern of who was dead and knew what he had done, so he skipped town. He left. And uh, Landor was satisfied with him just being terrified for the rest of his life. Um, after telling this, Poe is kind of shocked. He doesn't know what to say. He's like, um, okay. He's got this two pieces of evidence that will condemn him and put him to death, put Landor to death for the crimes he committed. Um, and as Poe is leaving Landor's cabin, he burns the two letters and lets Landor live with what he has done. I see this as an act of mercy on Poe's part. I personally don't see anything wrong with what Landor did. Um, if something like that were to happen to my family, um, I... I can't imagine the feelings that would come up. I'm not necessarily saying it was right for him to go and murder those kids, but kids, I mean, they're college students. They're 25 and 20, not 25. How old are college kids? I'm a college kid. They're in their early 20s. They're not kids, but they're, you know, they're young. But he kills them because of what they did to his daughter, um, which is fair, in my opinion. But um, Poe has mercy on him. And lets him live with that. And maybe it's not mercy. Maybe it's like, now you have to live with what you've done. You don't get to have the death ending. But it's like, I understand what you did. Um, you're my friend after all that they've been through in the movie. And he burns the letters uh, in front of Landor and leaves. And uh, the movie ends with Landor revisiting the place where his daughter jumped to her death. And I was like, please don't jump i don't do that don't end like that he doesn't i don't think at least not on camera he turns his back to like his daughter did and his daughter turned her back to the water behind her or to you know it's a, it's a cliff over a river um he turns his back holds out a little sash that was hers and lets it go and it flies away and then the credits roll but uh i, I mean i don't know did he jump off before i don't like why did he turn backwards to do that maybe just in remembrance of his daughter did he jump off after the credits roll uh i don't know uh it's it's kind of a happy ending it's not a it's a poe ending um it's not really happy it's not really sad it's just an ending it just ends uh in a place where the story should have ended it's not really happy or sad and that's what i meant by this movie is very edgar Allan poe there's this whole revenge aspect to it that comes in right at the end and you're like Oh yeah, I forgot that that's like all Poe writes about is revenge, killings and stuff like that. So when that comes in, you're like, oh okay, yeah, this is a Poe story. And set as a fictional kind of origin story for Poe, it makes sense that he would write stuff like that after having this whole experience with Landor. Anyway, Christian Bale steals the show in this movie. Henry Melling, really good in this movie. All the acting is phenomenal. The cinematography is beautiful. The landscapes, the time period, the the set pieces. It's this is a wonderful movie. I'm 
if I was going to rate it, I'd give it a 7.5 or an 8 out of 10. Probably an 8 out of 10. I don't like halves. So let's just go 8 out of 10 for The Pale Blue Eye. I enjoyed this movie. There are some shortcomings with just like some things that drag on for too long. Otherwise, the movie's phenomenal. Thank you all so much for sitting through this rambling rant of a review. Um, subscribe if you would like more reviews like this or other horror kind of content. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.